concept. Just throw me a bunch of enemies, you know? Yeah. Throw me a bunch of enemies. I just want to sit there for 50 rounds and just, like, shoot off my guns and just, uh, you know, of course, like I said, the difficulty is is pretty spot on. They could probably boost it up a little bit for yeah. players like me. Um, but then again, I don't know. I, I was in a three-person team that was well-optimized, yeah. right? So maybe the challenge at that point is the same thing. With, that's a challenge with a dungeon, which is going in solo or going in duo or whatever else. But either way, um, a blast. Simply yeah. that that horde mode concept, um, just throw it, endless waves, endless waves of en enemies at me and just allow me to just do something to feel like powerful. Just that power fantasy um, of making an impact uh, individually and as a you know coordinated team if necessary. So yeah, it was dope. It was dope. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed... I enjoyed the maps, the 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 changes to the maps, uh, particularly mm. like Vostok and Mothyards. I was um, gonna say Vostok. I was actually pleasantly surprised by that. I agree. Yeah, they they look beautiful and like and also terrifying, and <laughs> <laughs> like the scope of like how deep the darkness has kind of come into our 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 lines um, yeah yeah our, our cozy zone our cozy yeah. zone most definitely like places that we've never faced enemies before now they're right on our doorstep uh totally totally and that definitely seemed from the vidoc itself or or the gameplay preview um you know that's what it seems like based on what they said as well they're right on our doorstep um and uh now shacks has opened up uh, the opportunity for us to bring back some of these 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 banned weapons yeah um which i thought was kind of a cool little storyline as well so yeah what what did you think did, so i'm guessing in your in your waves did you play fight against fallen or the hive uh during your playthrough the hive mm -hmm. uh now she's shooting things but yeah the hive the majority of the time um yeah gotcha. and, and that's a that's a good question i guess as well uh, if you're facing the hive in like if you drop onto a map are you facing the same enemy on that for the, for all the waves Yes. Or is it or is you, it specific to a map? You are I don't think that is specific to a map because um on Midtown, on the Midtown map, I I faced Hive and Elixney in the same in, in the same encounter like no, uh, no, the same in, in different in different sessions of it. Oh, different so sessions, got you. It, but it always seems to be like the same enemy type for the first for all 50 waves. Uh, um uh, uh. And then it seems like there's like a a weekly boss. I think this week it's the ogre. Um, okay. Okay. And then uh, you have the um, tormentors that pop up. Yep. Yep. Periodically, mm -hmm. uh, the elixni. I despise with all my heart. There's something. <laughs> what? There's something uh, possibly screwy going on behind the scenes there, because. Uh, it was like the elixir would load in and then instantly be at the APU and doing damage <laughs> to it. Like I'm not I'm not talking like oh well, you know, they made it a short walk or a short breezy teleport over there. I'm talking about instant teleportation from drop over a football field away directly to the APU. Well, you and, know, we, we we had those 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 first day server jitters. Oh, I yeah. personally did not experience that particular instance. Yeah, that you're that you're talking about. Mine weren't right on because because you know now that I think about it, I did face the hive and I did face the elixir. I did face yeah. the fall as well. Uh, I I didn't face those particular. Um, I have a clip I can show you. <laughs> <laughs> Because you was... sound enthusiastic, like like it sounds like your enemies were particularly enthusiastic. The giant, the giant shanks would yeah. just yep. appear, and I, <laughs> as soon as as soon as they dropped, I would say, "Hey, watch this," and then they're on it. And so, I don't know that that feels a little screwy to me. The hive weren't so bad. I actually enjoyed my time fighting the hive more, but I did feel like the level of difficulty for for both was. Pretty substantial as you ramped up level to level um, in that in onslaught. Um, did you try legend? Were you in yep. legend or regular? Yep. Yeah, we played a little bit of uh, the regular until mm. we realized that the fifty. I think you can only access through the legend. No, um, it's uh, there. You can do it through. You can act or do it, it just, through norms. Or you, or you just have to go through. You just have to go to the side. Is, is yeah. the match made one only to ten? Or can you get to fifty off of like the match made one? There is the match made there's, there's, one, which it, is it, just it, a folks tenor. don't know. 
Yeah, if folks, uh, that's that's what it is. So for, for folks who haven't played yet or whatnot, and sorry to interrupt, um, but it's it's two different playlists, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's the one on the left, top left is match made, and it looks like you can only go like the ten rounds. Yeah, uh, and ten it rounds changes in that maps one. Every okay, every ten levels. Okay, got you, got you, got you. Um, and and I'm sorry, levels, they, waves is what yeah. they call them. Um, and on the right side, it's uh, you know build your own fire team. It's not match made or whatnot, and you can select each map mm -hmm. you know so uh you could you could play normal or you could play legend because mm -hmm. it's six selections three maps each um which is and, cool uh, i like that they that allow cool. you to choose the map that Agreed. you want to go on it's kind of it's, it's like a private match it's like yeah. private matches for uh, onslaught um and that's where you can uh like i said it's not match made you choose your own fire teams you can go in solo you can go in duo you can go a trio of course um and uh unlike private matches right it you know, uh, you you get the same like requisite loot or whatnot, and those are the ones that you can take the fifty waves, um, if you so wish to do so and make it, um, as well. So because uh, mm -hmm. it gets obviously increasing difficulty as you go on in those waves and whatnot. So, so yeah, um, yeah, it's dope. It's dope. I yep. liked it. I enjoyed it. I look forward to getting back in there. The loot was on point. Yeah, the loot was on point as far as how much loot dropped. Um, and you know. I'm still learning about this, you know, like about Onslaught and obviously it just dropped yesterday and I only got the chance to play for like, you know, several hours yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, I did end up, what is it called? What do you call it when you like focus to the point where only one of the new brave weapons ends up oh. dropping? Stress oh. was an E, I feel like. Somebody, somebody in your like listeners is just like, Tony, it's this. And yeah, they're, they're going crazy. They're, they're, they're going, going crazy, crazy right, right now. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let them go crazy. Let them go yeah, crazy. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, this, is, this is how you do. Okay. <laughs> this is this is the. Uh, I'm okay with my. Okay. This is okay. This is your community. I just I'm just trying to figure out how you and your community interact. Okay. I got you. Know, you guys I'm are trolling not each against other. an adversarial relationship mm. with my audience. That's crazy. You're such a nice guy. It's like. Yeah. Okay. All right. I can let right. bits go for, on for a very long time though. Hmm. Mm. One of my favorites. How does, how does Jenny feel about that? Uh, <laughs> so one that I I played. <laughs> one thing that I've been doing recently is uh, asking her to come here because I have something very important to say. And so when she shows up, I just hand her something. I'm like, "Can you hold that for me?" And then I'll I'll continue talking for a little bit, and then I'll hand her something else, and just to see how many things that she'll hold for me. This is psychological warfare. Um, <laughs> everything is. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> but anyway, I, I do that with friends. I once had a ten minute hug in a bar. That was kind of nice. Hey, I'm okay. I'm okay with that. I'm, I like that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It was good. It was really good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but onslaught. Yeah, I really in I liked the the focusing uh, of the weapons. I was only. Yeah. Uh, in my in my time, because my play session was broken up to like, uh, we hopped into onslaught at launch. Uh, we played the whisper mission, mm, and then mm. uh, in the normal and the the legend version. And then we, I helped a uh, garden of salvation div <laughs> div run after that. Friends gotta help friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you do you. You know. Yeah. Um. But I'm looking forward to more onslaught. Uh. Tomorrow. Um, yeah. But yeah, I only got the Elsie Bray focus on that one. Uh, the the shiny drops. I I like that you can take the missions and then get the get the uh, the fixed roll as well as the shiny version of the weapon. I think that that's yep. really cool. Um, yeah. Uh, what what did you have drop that you enjoyed playing with the most? So. Um, I didn't understand the like focusing system, and mm -hmm. again, I apologize everybody for not knowing that the the particular word. You you end up uh, going to the new, new social space with Shax, and you end up interacting with um, like a particular a particular statue that is associated with a particular brave um, uh, new brave weapon. And when mm -hmm. you do that, you end up activating it or something, and 
that weapon is the only weapon that is going to drop from onslaught at that point mm. and then you can deactivate that and that and now you get like random drops of like different weapons different brave weapons that are available for that week or whatnot um and so i accidentally interacted with the statue for lc's like rifle or whatnot mm -hmm. or whatever it's called um Pulse rifle, uh, 340, slow rate of fire, slowest rate of fire, high impact, if I remember correctly. Um, three bursts, so it's not the aggressive frame, it's the high impact frame. Mm -hmm. um, and I like, and so so I did that accidentally. I would have actually done the recluse if I knew what I was doing at the time. I did mm -hmm. end up going back at the end of my session and deactivating that session, that, uh, that, uh, that statue. But uh, to go back to your question, I actually really like that rifle a lot. It's yeah. it's it's the same type of rifle in the same subfamily, I should say, as um, the messenger. But it feels I'm a big weapon feels guy. Mm -hmm. um, it feels lighter. Mm -hmm. um, I was uh, reading something a little bit more in detail about it before. I think I ended up going over to D2 Foundry as well to like spec it a little bit more deeply. And it seems like it's got it's pretty juiced on the stats. Mm -hmm. um, above messenger yeah 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 and that's really interesting because usually like in-game weapons uh especially from trials i've noticed are super juiced with the stats like they like things that you get is like like the example that i'll give is things that you get from world drops for mm -hmm. example the new 120 um the new 120 arc uh rpm uh hand cannon that you get as a world drop this season um, is very, very diminished. It's very, very, like, under, understat, <laughs> understated, mm -hmm. if you want to just say, I'll just make up a word. Yeah. Um, versus something like Igneous Hammer, which we all know is juice with the stats. Palindrome, you know, uh, Nightfall reward from Nightfall's past, uh, juice with the stats. And so uh, it, was, it was really cool to see Elsie's uh, rifle be even more juiced than Messenger, it seems like, as far as overall stats that are available on the weapon just at base. Um, and it just, it felt amazing. It just mm -hmm. felt amazing is all I'm saying. It felt light. It felt responsive. Um, I like the gun model a lot. It looks great. It shades great. Um, so I can talk about that weapon like all day. I ended up getting, um, it's, it's void, mm -hmm. which is cool as well. Um, and so I ended up getting a repulsor brace, maybe like frenzy, and mm -hmm. I was already using Gerfalcon as well. Oh okay. man, it was it, it fit it fit right into my build, right in my build because yeah. normally I use um, a repulsor brace uh, hero's burden um, uh, with that build, with that Boy 3.0 build with Gerfalcon and you know Devour on it. I mean, you just can't die on that build, and you, you just have like overshields on overshields. It's super fun. So uh, you know. Uh, the recluse that I got was a very similar role to that, and that mm -hmm. fit right into my build. Those are pretty much the only two weapons that I, you know, I got to uh, interact with um, over that session, and a lot of fun, a lot of fun, and really cool. Like I said, I'll just reiterate the fact that the perk combinations that are dropping on these weapons um, and how they fit into current power fantasy um, uh, builds that are currently available in PVE. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. So. I guess that it would make sense that you would you would drop more more hot weapons. Uh, one would say, like in yeah. a free update for everybody two months before final shape. Like, and that's the thing, exactly. You're trying to get everybody back to the game, especially you know the OGs. Uh, trying to get those folks excited. You're trying to get mm -hmm. them on social media talking about the game, uh, which is working. It, it, it's it's working like fantastically. You've seen the morale just over the last month, month and a half, just just completely go zero 180 um and that's that's great to see that's great to see and great to see that people are, are genuinely excited about coming back to the game with a lot of depth um you know this isn't just superficial stuff this is stuff that's already in the game now and uh you can see how uh the previews that we're getting uh from bungie on things that are coming from final shape you can see how those are going to fit into you know your gameplay loop and i think the most exciting thing about that too is that there's so many permutation, permutations that we're obviously going to talk about this a little bit on the new prismatic subclass. Mm -hmm. You can't see, you know, like it's going to shake it up to the point where we can only imagine some of the things that might be possible with some of the build crafting that's coming in final shape. So um, super exciting. And it's uh, I think the most exciting part about it is the fact that we just don't we don't know, you know, yeah. what's coming. Um, uh, yeah. So it's cool. even, even the stuff we do know, it's it's 
it feels so abstract. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yep, yep, exactly. Yep. Like, yeah, it's it's crazy. It's just um, it's just like specifically again to reiterate with the prismatic class, we're gonna be able to combine a bunch of stuff from a bunch of different subclasses, right? Mm -hmm. And then with the exotic class item that's coming, oh, we're yeah, gonna be dude. able to combine exotic perks <laughs> and not just from that character right yeah if i read if i saw it correctly we're going to be able to take something that's exotic from a titan mm -hmm. something that's exotic from like a hunter so ophidian aspects perk plus maybe like the perk from uh Syntheseps, combine mm -hmm. that to the same and just put that on your warlock or put that on your titan put that on yeah. your hunter it won't be class specific in that regard is, I is that think there's a trade-off there though let's let's and let's back it up yep. though real quick yep 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 i'm listening uh over the next couple months where do you see the pvp sandbox leaning do you see these brave weapons mm. kind of seeping their way in to high usage in pvp not just for like the uh the novelty of them but do you what roles do you see kind of being more versatile in that space so i'm reviewing I'm, I'm just looking at them again right in front mm -hmm. of me uh you know i haven't seen um or or even like like memorized or even seen like all of the different perk combinations that are mm -hmm. coming on everything um do i think that some of this stuff is going to become meta it's tough for me to s like there's nothing that has stood out to me outside of one thing which is probably obvious that i'll mention here in a second that uh, I'm just like, man, that's definitely going to be like meta or that's going to be particularly spicy. Um, so in that regard, I feel like they've they've had a lot of forethought. Mm -hmm. um, of course, something might sneak up into the meta. Um, of course, I don't know. You know, I, like I said, I'm not well versed enough right now. Things have just dropped and we've just seen a bunch of the perks uh, and perk combinations. I think that, of course, the the one outlier that I just uh, alluded to was Luna's Howl. That's gonna mm -hmm. that's gonna definitely be meta, one hundred percent. Not just because we've seen some of the per combinations. A great example would be Slide Shot Precision Instrument, um, and also they've spoken really highly of uh, any sort of rework for Mag Magnificent Howl as well, mm -hmm. which was the trait that made Luna's Howl and Not Forgotten, uh, you know, kind of legendary amongst uh, you know D two weapons. Um, I think we're going to see that at the very least, just based off of nostalgia. People are just excited to see that back. Yeah. A lot of people, that was their favorite weapon um, in the Crucible. A significant amount of people have said that to me. Um, so I, I definitely expect to see that creep up in usage once that ends up dropping and people get those perk combinations and even more when it becomes enhanced as well uh, with the final shape. Um, I think that based on me using Elsie's rifle, um, what do they call it? El yeah, it is called Elsie's yeah. rifle. Um, uh i think that that thing is amazing i expect to see that creep up uh at least to messenger levels wherever messenger is right now yeah um again you're gonna be able to get that enhanced come final shape so i don't see any reason why that wouldn't you know leave some sort of substantial footprint similar to 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 where messenger is right now um let me see it looking uh, at destiny tracker it looks like messenger the adept version is at least in the top 20. yeah i do expect it to you know land somewhere around there if i mean if mm -hmm. not exactly where it's at probably somewhere decently you know below it or whatnot it's also void so you're going to be able to play that into the void kit which i think is the thing that's going to end up you know like messenger's kinetic right mm -hmm. and so at lc's you're going to be able to build build craft into anything void uh we're talking about grafalcon and stuff like that i'm literally going to put together a PvP Gerfalcon build again because that gameplay loop is so much fun in PvE, but mm -hmm. um, you know, uh you can definitely make some things happen with a lot of the perks that are on Elsie's rifle as well. And like I said, it feels really nice. It's mobile, it feels light, it's got significant handling to it, um, and it's got some some great perks um that are uh, super fun uh gameplay loop wise. So that uh, I saw something else there as well. Um, we'll see how Mountaintop ends up dropping mm -hmm. Midnight Coup. We'll see how that ends up playing in. It still has relatively diminished year one stats, and right yeah. now range those is kind of like everything week. on that. Yep. And so we'll definitely see how those end up playing. I'll have a better feel for that at the end of next week, honestly, because I expect to see those, especially Mountaintop, especially Mountaintop. I expect to see that in the Crucible. Um, and so we'll see how the effective that is versus other, you know, um, breach loaded. Uh, 
GLs that we currently have uh, in the Crucible sandbox. Uh, Hammerhead, I do expect to see a bit more of that uh, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, that was another one of those uh, beloved weapons um, in Forsaken or around Forsaken time. Blast Furnace, the original dad rifle, by the way, yeah. the original dad rifle. <laughs> I know a lot of people love that thing, so I definitely expect, I've seen some spicy, I mean, it's just going to be nice. I think we should expect to see Blast Furnace for sure. Um, mm -hmm. It's uh, It's got like double stability type perks on there. I think it's got, you know, an, like another rapid hit head seeker. I mean, it's just, it's just juiced as far as it's like per combination. It already had like pretty juiced base stats as well. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, I think a lot of these weapons are going to creep up into the meta uh, because they just chose them well. Um, they are nostalgic hits. Um, and, uh, you know, even if they just have, you know, decent perks on them. I think we'll see them, you know, get some play or whatnot. But the ones that, that got those top tier perks, like Blast Furnace, like uh, like Luna's Howl, I think we should expect to see them creep up uh, pretty heavily into the meta usage. Yeah, the, um, during during that Garden of Salvation run, I used I I was using Recluse pretty much the entire time. I was actually having a, a blast with it. Yeah, I think and I the gun still feels amazing. Yeah. Um, and familiar. I mean, there are other types of that mm -hmm. style of gun in the game. It's just, of course, it felt good to have the OG back. <laughs> back yeah, exactly, and exactly. Yeah. And that's that's gonna carry. That's gonna carry pretty heavily. Like I said, even if it just gets decent perks, um, people are gonna use it just because they just love the gun. And and mm -hmm. that's another fantastic and understated thing about Destiny Two is, I mean, we all know and recognize that the gunplay um, is something that is at the forefront of players' minds whenever they say their favorite aspect of Destiny Two. Um, but it's also about specific guns that people have these these year long like you know love affairs with, and uh, the nostalgia is strong. And we've seen you know that we are a very nostalgic gamer community. Yeah. Um. You know the Destiny community by you know how much of a balance the team has to strike between bringing old things back and supporting new things, right? right. So um, I tell my people all the time, they're just like, man, we just wish that you know spare rations when it came back, they would just give it the bump to these stats or whatnot. And I'm just like. I don't know if that's a good idea it, just because I want to make sure we respect the devs time when they create something new and fresh, you know, like there's a limited amount of time we can play with these weapons. Right. Yeah. And if we just keep on allowing the older weapons to power creep or to be on the same level as the newer weapons, then what's the point, you know, of that dev time that just got put into something brand new? No, you know, let's, let's try the new stuff. Let's create something new. Let's shake, shake some stuff up. And the people that are super nostalgic about the old guns, you know, let's just make sure that they're viable. Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I'm completely okay with them not being, you know, in, in the same place as they were in the original sandbox with which they were introduced. That's my take, at least, though. Don't, <laughs> you know, don't, don't shoot the messenger. That's just my take. <laughs> yeah. I'm just... The messenger is a different weapon. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> I, see she, I see what she did there, Dad. Yeah, you see? See, see, what see what I did? See what I did? Yeah. I see yeah. what she did mm -hmm. there, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> did, you, did you play any of the Whisper? yesterday i did yeah. um i hesitate did... on saying this little this little thing we were doing i ain't i don't think i want to let it go because then <laughs> somebody's gonna blame me but tony you got that patch before i could do it and stuff like that i'm just <laughs> i'm just not i'm just not but uh yeah um i wasn't even planning on doing the whisper stuff love yeah. that mission by the way i said yeah. goaded that exotic mission is just like if, if there was a, an exotic mission that somebody was just like yo what's the best off the top uh, immediately i'd just be the whisper mission like like riding that's, a bike that's, that's the one that's the one it is like ride a bike too because uh there's a lot of places where you can get lost there's a lot of places where you know you could fall down here there's a lot of people's places you just don't even know where to go if mm -hmm. if you're just like doing it a really good example of that is when you uh when you drop down um and you go into that like large stone room mm -hmm. um and are you talking about the red room with all the with all the portals or are you talking about the green room uh, i think it's the green room that we're yeah. talking about yeah it's well lit the green room stone everywhere you know it looks like you're inside of like a like a square or whatnot and uh you go initially you know when you don't know that mission you go and you're just like oh man maybe i just need to go forward or whatnot mm -hmm. to get to the next location i gotta get maybe to the I need top to, like lift this and it's just like bungie's just like no you dumbass can i say dumbass <laughs> Yeah, you can say dumbass. Okay, okay. No, you dumbass. You literally have to just, you don't even go explore this room. 
the next yeah. way is you you just drop slightly down in this little crack that's right underneath you. You don't that even go into the big so room. So missable. That's it's so, so missable. missable. You, you, you wouldn't you wouldn't even think it's there. You would not even think it's there. It's just this little crack, and you go down right underneath you. You don't even go to the big big room, and mm -hmm. that's the way out. That's the way out. It's crazy. It's a crazy troll. But uh, yeah, it's like riding a bike because um, you know I just found myself. Oh, I. Oh, now, okay, oh, yeah, I'm, I, it was just on, on autopilot because we had done that mission so many times in the past. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, it was dope to see it come back. I really enjoyed it. I didn't plan on doing the Whisper mission, but, you know, we found out about this little, like, glitch thing, which I don't know if exists, you know, like today. They might have patched it already, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, we were just trying to, like, figure it out and see see how it works. So we were doing that for, like, I don't know, half an hour, 45 minutes, just geeking out with my community nerds on it and trying to find the process but uh yeah i did uh did a significant amount of that got the whisper got the catalyst mm -hmm. um got it crafted uh and uh you know now we're just trying to get uh you know the additional like like i don't, I don't know what you call them attunement options or something like, like that perks yeah 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 exactly so so yeah um honestly i even forgot that whole system you know i guess that started maybe with revision zero or e is that is that the gun that started it like Ish. with the crafted exotics and yeah, well, no, because no, that, that was, it was the it, uh, was, it was Witch Queen, right? It was like Osteo, maybe or something. Uh, Osteo was the know. first craftable, and then you had you had all of the um, you had all of the uh, glaives that you could get um to craft. The, but forgot, I really, the forgotten, the forgotten ones. <laughs> I think Dead Man's Tale was the first of those that had mm. additional options. That mm. was that you you ran it over and over again, and just in order to get the, got the you, addition, got additional you, got you, got yeah. you, yeah. So so I've never been like a huge Dead Man Cell person or Revision Zero person. Mm -hmm. So just even you know conceptually, I was just like, I got to do extra. What what are you talking about? And yeah. So my people were like literally just sitting there explaining it to me. Tony, we talked about this a mm -hmm. year ago. You know when you decided you didn't want to do the Dead Man Cell stuff. You didn't want to do the revision, you know, zero stuff. You didn't want to learn that then when now we were trying to explain it, it to you. Now, now you're doing it for Whisper. Now you want us to do all the work for you and tell you how to... And you're the one that's supposed to be the streamer. You're the one that's supposed to be the one that's, like, telling us stuff. That's a creator's now, life, though. Like that's, It really is. It's I'm people, leading people, others. People think, people think we, you know, like, yeah, sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm just a, a, a disseminator of information. Yeah, yeah, we'll go out there and we'll do some science every once in a while. But, you know, a lot of times I'm just picking up stuff from you guys and then just rehashing it whenever somebody asks me later. So definitely. <laughs> yeah, I I really like the mission. I, I, it was like riding a bike. I liked the change at the end with the ogre boss. <laughs> um, like that was that was cool. Um, the, and also the prisms. So that you could spawn the bosses at different times so you could take them yeah. one by one. Um, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I still feel like twenty minutes is is ample enough time now. No, to, oh, totally enough time. I mean, yeah, we're yeah. so powerful now. Seriously, yeah. uh, you know, the I had like I've, I've got two super optimized like PVE solar and uh, and void builds, and it was just it was it was nothing. Especially, I mean, you know, maybe be a little bit more obviously if I was doing a solo, mm -hmm. uh, but I was in there with you know two other well optimized guardians or whatnot. Twenty minutes is plenty of time for sure. Yeah. Um, Something so. that was brought to my attention was that like we had burns on those old missions, so we you had you kind of had to take into account like a solar or a void or an arc rotation. Um, so that might have a little bit to I do with about it that. too. True, true, true. So uh, one thing, and I I hesitate to say this because I've rallied against it in the past, is mm. like a, a champion or two might have like actually been like a Spice nice addition a in uh, those like taken rooms uh, uh. i could see those being being kind of cool um i hear you i guess i guess the devil's advocate side thing mm -hmm. uh, of that is um it's a free update yeah right um and you want people to get i the see loot. it I, you want people to get the loot but i'm thinking about and i i've just for the last couple of years just in particular i've, I've just been thinking about like my new lights and my my folks that you know are a little bit newer to the game that only have a certain degree of resources that mm -hmm. that we have you know um from playing the game for for years um and so you know ha having something like this be pretty straightforward i think i'd lean that way so mm -hmm. i like the way that it it dropped it provided a little bit of extra depth from some of the things that you said before just a tiny bit 
Um, but for the most part, it's it's more just kind of an intro to exotic missions is the way mm -hmm. that I think of it. Um, and uh, and yeah, um, I know that Bungie, along with getting the nostalgic OGs back, are, are definitely, and it's in their best interest too, of course, um, get some new people back as well and introduced into the game uh, before Final Shape. Because that, that really is like a lot of our friends are just like, you know, A, uh, you know, should I pick up? You know this game or you know destiny 2 you know mm -hmm. we know the final shapes coming through oh yeah i mean what i would always tell people is if you play if i plan on telling them to join in for the final shape i'm going to tell them to drop in early so that they can get acclimated to the game yeah um and so those are the folks i feel like you know um bungie catered it a little bit more to yeah. and into the light as well um so so yeah um i agree with kind of like how it dropped in that regard yeah it it was very much like a hey everybody in the pool S yeah, stuff's about to everybody pop off. Yeah, exactly yeah. exactly and so we'll save all this like challenging stuff all this you know uh you know stuff where you got to actually like think a little bit more mm -hmm. build crafting otherwise um we'll save all that for final shape so that it can be a nice nice substantial like shake up yeah. and obviously bungie is just throwing literally everything at the wall right now seeing what sticks in a very you know, like targeted fashion for sure. Yeah. I don't want to make it seem like there isn't some sort of like big brain behind it, but uh, I like that. I like that. Yeah. Everybody in the pool. Yeah. Everybody in the pool. It's about to get weird. And yeah. it is definitely about to get weird with uh, the, the dawning of prismatic uh, guardians with the, with the prismatic super itself that. Yep. The subclass. Yep. Yeah. 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 That see it. It's completely nuts. Uh yeah. To me. Uh, so a little over people were pointing out on Twitter uh when it was now announced that Professor Broman called it here on the show. Uh <laughs> because I was like, what is something that you wanted you want to see in Destiny 2? And he's like, I wanna mm. see you be able to mix and match things. I wanna be able to see, I want you to be able to wear every piece of exotic gear going into the fight with the witness and that was like back in july <laughs> of mm, last year yeah, right before gcx yeah. and we kind of got that handed to us on a platter here yeah um yeah, yeah with with prismatic we're going to be able to make some match a lot of like dark and light fantasies a lot of it feels like an action when they talked about um strand they called it the action per minute subclass but really i think mm. that that was that's like training wheels for what we're about to get i um, agree on your first because before the, before the call you were kind of intaking everything about uh prismatic um what were what are some of your initial thoughts and takeaways uh you know um i i'll, I'll say it again um I can't remember whether we said it, you know, pre-called or, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, or, or uh, to start the show. But um, I like the fact that, you know, it's it's abstract, it's ambiguous. Um, the fact that, you know, there's so many combinations that are going to come up with Prismatic that we can't. A lot of times when when we're about to see a DLC drop and they give us some sort of preview, people are already build crafting. Mm -hmm. People are already just like, yo, this is what's going to be hot. You see the videos start coming out. Hey, this is this is the build right here. This is the build with the weapon. Um, this is what type of synergy you're going to see. This is what the gameplay loop is going to look like. This is why it's going to be meta or whatnot. You're not going to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, sure, there are some things that you're, some builds you're going to put, put together like ahead of time, but there's going to be many more builds that are going to come up that we don't really have an idea for right now just because so much is like open-ended to... Um, you know, just player creativity, you know, Bungie doesn't even know, you know, the type of combinations that are going to come up sometimes, even when we didn't like, like even in the past before Prismatic. Um, and, and now we're just going to be able to just build craft to our heart's content and see what type of interactions we can put together uh, between different elements from different subclasses. Mm -hmm. um, and then on top of that, I'm sure we're going to discuss the exotic, uh, uh, the exotic class item item in a little bit as well, but but yeah, that was the first impression for me was man, like I can try to come up with something right now, yeah, but 
<laughs> when it drops and and when as well they they end up i'm sure including because there's only a subset of subclass mechanics that or you know aspects yeah. fragments uh, you know like grenades etc cetera, etc cetera, that are included and able to be used with prismatic it's yeah. not the entire it's not the entire kit spectrum yeah. you know of of all the subclasses right they have a select few like a selection a select subset um and so i assume that they're going to slowly but surely pull in like other elements from the subclasses as we go you know mm -hmm. and not necessarily you know ones that exist solely on drop a final shape so my point again is that's the thing that stood out to me like the most with prismatic is that we just won't be able to just figure everything out like because so much of this game right now the uh criticism is that uh it's it's solved mm -hmm. right it's just solved. We like players have already like bill crafted to their heart's content, just min maxed to to the max. Um, and so uh, to see just like the chaos that will just come out of, um, you know, the, these creative builds uh, from all these different permutations of what you can combine and what ways and what type of interactions um, are going to synergize seems uh, seems really cool. And it seemed like from the preview you know the devs were just like we don't even know <laughs> yeah we don't even know what you guys are going to come up with it's going to be spicy it did, they they you literally use the word broken like in the actual mm -hmm. preview itself so um you know that's uh that's exciting to me for sure um that's that's the thing that uh you know most excited me about prismatic is the fact that it just uh you know seems like it's very hard especially at this point for it for anything to be solved with it um and uh player creativity is going to be at an all-time high, I think. Heck yeah. Um, in the article that they released today, it was, they did say that like, um, a lot of these abilities come from maybe some supers that are a little underutilized in, in some aspects. Mm -hmm. And so it, it does feel like we, we do have a very specific set for each, for each, um, character for each class. Yeah. Um, and the w things that I'm noticing here, a distinct lack of like healing nades on these, except for, for everybody, except for warlock. And mm. it almost feels like in, in kind of popping the doors open to all these different abilities, they're also allowing for a, maybe a little bit more reclamation of class identity mm, mm, mm. in these interesting like do you do you feel that in some of the some of the way that they've built this out like i haven't i haven't thought about it i'm gonna leave that one you know for you i'll, I'll defer uh yeah like i didn't notice that off the rip um not saying it, it's not there obviously yeah it's, you know this information just dropped so um one thing I will say is maybe they're making like one thing I will say is if that's if that's truly true and that was the intention, like mm -hmm. I'm all for it because obviously that's been one of the biggest, if not the biggest criticism from the 3.0, uh, the 3.0 like rework of the subclasses is that, you know, man, like this lost its identity and it ended up getting, you know, like um, jolt nades. Uh, Arc Web was originally mm -hmm. on Stormcaller, right? And that ended up just being kind of like evolved into Jolt, which is, I guess, maybe like a, a slightly less substantial or slightly less impactful like Arc Web. And then it got given to all the classes, right? Mm -hmm. Hunter, Titan, and Warlock. Um, and so Warlocks ended up losing that aspect, that class identity or whatnot, um, Stormcaller in particular. Um, to see uh, some of that maybe get reclaimed a little bit in through Prismatic, I'd be all for that for sure because I'm on that train. Um, you know, I uh, you know I liked um, Arc Web there. I lo love and still what happened to my boy Sunspots. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> Sunspots, Bungie, please. <laughs> Why? Why? Solar Titan was so cool, man. That was the identity, man. I'd I'd love to see that come back a little bit. Uh, you know, the way that it first dropped with uh, 2.0 as far as the impact of Sunspots. But the point is, uh, glad to see that come back. I'm all for, like, class identity um, and things that are specific to the those classes or even subclasses. And, um, you know, they may be leaving space as well uh, for that exotic class item. If you can really pull exotic traits from, uh, 
exotics across classes, mm -hmm. um, then, you know, maybe that's something that they, okay, well, maybe we need to make sure that there's class identity here with prismatic because we're going to be mixing and matching a little bit more with the class item. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. I, li I like it. I like it. Yeah. But obviously, we don't know what the implication is with uh, everything else that they have cooking up yeah um with her final shape Every, everybody's saying cooking lately <laughs> bro uh, woo! see that's that's why that's why i looked at the camera right there you know because because i keep on i keep on telling people it's played out people please stop using that that <sighs> word please but I, honestly i don't even know what we'd replace it with at this point man it's just it seems like if that's not in miriam yeah like the, the, the dictionary the oxford dictionary by now it's got to be man because lord have mercy it seemed like there's that that's a word that has no substitute at this point that's how much i see it it is the first <laughs> time as an adult that like folks have been saying something and i'm like oh that's kid shit <laughs> like, like i you know like i'm not uh, that isn't for me I'm fine. I don't. I don't need to. I don't. I don't need to partake. <laughs> Thanks though. Uh, is it? Yeah, I'll stop it. Uh, st uh, sticking out my giat for the Rizzler. I'll keep that. Um, <laughs> Stick out my. Oh yeah. boy. <laughs> uh, so, but another part. So you you brought up the the class items. That seems super interesting to me because like I've I, I did kind of like a comparison. Uh, after some discussion in my Discord server earlier uh, today, I did a comparison between like the legendary that they showed off and the exotic, and I'm not okay. entirely sure if it is something that people have picked up picked up on. Um, but when but the difference between the legendary and the exotic is that the legendary actually contributes to your stats. It contributes oh. that 12, 12, 12 across the board to all your stats, whereas the exotic doesn't have a stat block attributed to it at least in the video I don't interesting know if, i don't know interesting if, yeah i don't know if on, so you on get, launch so you it get, will you get the, the yeah but that's interesting that'd be a good trade-off though um yeah. you know uh because because i mean you know like they've made a concerted effort mm -hmm. i do feel like to make sure that we aren't stat monsters as much as you know we were in the past that they're very heavily controlling you know sources of artifice gear and then even you know now we have artifice gear that drops from competitive playlists but you know usually those drop with an average of something like 61 62 so it's not mm -hmm. like anything crazy like a dungeon at the end or something um so uh, i kind of like that trade-off and that seems like that's kind of in the same vein as the way that they've been trying to make sure that we don't have like <laughs> you know triple quadruple 100 so easily across yeah. our stat builds um and uh yeah, that's interesting. Well, I guess we'll see, you know. Yeah. Um, but uh, that is interesting to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of my questions to you is like, so if you see somebody walking into trials with one of these class items on, are you immediately checking to see what aspects they have to be able to that's like really work out question. their kit? That's a really good question. Um, because normally, like with any other exotic. You can just see it, and you know exactly what you're dealing with. You're probably right. I probably would. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess it just depends on what um, exotic traits are available mm -hmm. to mix and match. That that because it's supposed to, they're supposed to drop with an RNG element of mm -hmm. you don't know what's going to come on it as far as the combined traits, right? Yeah. Um, and so uh, especially at the beginning, you know, we drop into trials right after like final shape drops i'm i'm definitely going to be checking um at the very least just based off of novelty you never know whether you know somebody's got the goaded trip mines yeah you know on their exotic class item right and that's something that i would generally want to know um i mean i'm specking people's exotics when they do drop into the crucible i'm sorry when they do drop into trials you know from the intro screen i don't see why i wouldn't you know spec mm -hmm. their um uh exotic uh class item and i would hope that uh on that starter screen just like we would be able to see Omkar spines equipped, for example, mm -hmm. um, that with the class item, we'd be able to just easily see what two traits they have on it. Yeah. Um, you know, so, yeah. Uh, I, yeah, definitely. Definitely, I would. Heck yeah. Um, another thing that I was going to say, so when, when it dropped, I, wa I watched the thing at launch and saw Prismatic and mm -hmm. saw how... Um, the transcendence like was applied and i was thinking 
why would anybody run anything else <laughs> on this? But knowing like that there's only so many supers, like there's still some identity left for well, even if it's like a reduced function later on. Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah. there's still a lot. I don't think it's going to. It's two things. Yeah, there's still a lot that the kits themselves outside of combining things offer. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, the uh, prismatic is only going to be as good as how you end up like what you select and how you end up synergizing those things that you select together to build something. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, also keep in mind that they said, uh, just like you said earlier, they're pulling together things in prismatic elements, uh, from subclasses that are underutilized. Mm -hmm. Um, not all of them, but you know, like a lot of them that they pulled together were specifically because they were underutilized, right? Mm -hmm. um, which tells me, excuse me, which tells me at the very least that, uh, you know, these, these, you know, may not be prismatic, may just at baseline may not be as impactful. Um, you know, the, the sum of the parts aren't going to go crazy with, the, right. you know, like, uh, you know, above uh, the ceiling of something that is just a set subclass like Well of Radiance with what's available today is what I'm saying. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I still expect to see, you know, the uh, 3.0 subclasses just set outside of Prismatic. I still expect to see, you know, them, them you know, well represented um, across all of uh, PVE and PVP. But obviously, we'll just have to, you know, wait and see. Uh, so, right. so much of it, so much of it is what is available on Prismatic and, you know, how are people combining things uh, you know, to make something equally or more impactful is what we have already. Um, another thing, let's, let's, let's talk about class identity. They added like the hailfire spike, the electrified snare, and the freezing singularity. So the, those will mm -hmm. only be active on those classes. Um, running yeah, and prismatic. only when only when trans transcendent as well. Mm -hmm. You know, and so you you like you kind of alluded to why would you run prismatic over the 3.0 is just the subclasses that we have these days mm -hmm. i think that a large selling piece for, for that for sure will be uh transcendence mm -hmm. um you know you end up getting that boosted ag ability region and the looping that you can do between the melee and the grenade um so uh so yeah and, and also just the additional um ability for uh your um uh, matching elemental weapons um, to 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 kind of build into getting transcendent and um, you know what you can do with uh, you know some additional synergizing and, and looping there. So so yeah um, yeah yeah. When you when you were going through some of the facets earlier, you pointed out uh, facet of purpose and facet of ruin um, that we only got about half, a little over half of the facets listed then what are going to drop? I guess there's going to be a total of 21 fragments um, for Prismatic itself on day one. Um, what what about those? So, like, the facet of purpose, picking up an orb, grants either amplified restoration, frost armor, woven mail, or overshield based on damage type of your equipped super, and facet of rain, or ruin, uh, the increase size of damage of the burst when they shatter a stasis crystal or frozen target, and increases the size of solar ignitions. You had expressed that those would be um, pretty handy in the crucible. Uh, yeah, care to reiterate that for the folks who weren't in here before the call? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so for folks that maybe aren't you know up on it, uh, we're getting some new fragments um, specific to prismatic subclass, the new the new subclass. Um, and, uh, they're, they start off with facet, just like, uh, you know, void fragments start off with echo, uh, you know, arc fragments start off with spark. And so, uh, the two that, uh, stuck out to me the most, um, not in like a bad way per se or anything like that, but they mm -hmm. just stuck out to me was facet of purpose and the other one being facet of ruin, uh, the facet of purpose, just like you said, pick it up or overpower it either grants you amplified restoration, frozen mail. I'm sorry, frozen armor, woven mail, or overshield based on the damage type of your equipped super. Um, and, you know, that's just basically a lot of those come around to damage resistance um, or some sort of healing. Uh, woven mail, overshield, obviously damage resistance, restoration would be a good example of like healing and to some degree damage resistance as well. Because if you're running 
tier 10. Uh, I don't know if this is still true right now because 140 hand cannons just ended up getting a buff uh, just yesterday on Tuesday, um, mostly to um, to address damage fall off uh, issues that that happened after the previous update. But either way, if someone was uh, using restoration and had tier 10 resilience you could you can't actually if they had re restoration active i think one or two it didn't matter you can't actually three tap them you know like it hit it before the update it hit for 377s to the head with a 140 hand cannon and they got left with like a sliver of health you literally could not three tap them if they had just dropped a heal nade for example and had tier 10 resilience um so restoration you know does some funky things when it comes to certain you know, like niche situations um, to to kind of push the optimal on some weapons. Like I said, I don't know if that's still going to be the case with the uh, increased um, headshot uh, damage coming from 140s after the uh, after this past update. But either way, um, that's interesting. You know, that's interesting that an Orba Power is going to do that. Right now, you know, the best you're going to get from an Orba Power in the Crucible is Devour. Mm -hmm. um or building into like better already or um uh there's another one on boots a boot mod that uh, starts your recovery or something like that so like a uh, that's the best you're gonna get uh no it's not a kickstart it's it's called uh i i can't remember better already uh, is the example um that i do remember the name of better already is a mod on the boots um that whenever you pick up an orb um uh you end up getting, um, you end up starting your recovery. So I end up using recuperation. Recuperation is the other one. That's correct. I end up using recuperation because end up whenever I end up proccing an orb from like say a double kill with a shotgun, and then I have a siphon on my helmet that drops an orb uh, for that shotgun off of like rapid kills, which in the crucible just counts as two. I end up taking out two people with a shotgun, an orb drops, and I'm right there, and I slide over it just automatically, or Powerful Attraction is a mod that is on my, uh, you know, uh, class item, um, so the orb ends up getting attracted to me a little bit. Either way, I get that orb, and I get a bump to my health mm -hmm. at that point off of recuperation that it gives me just a little bit of damage resistance that allows me to make, hopefully, make a play on that third person right before i'm able to get recovery before i'm able to get health back from just my normal recovery i end up getting um you know a health boost just off of that orb and so that's what facet of pur purpose kind of like uh continues to play into that gameplay loop picking up that orb just gives you some additional damage resistance or recovery or uh amplified and you know there's ways right now where if you're amplified you get a little bit of damage resistance off of being amplified um and so that's what uh you know uh, seemed a little uh not not like heavily, mildly spicy to me, mildly mm -hmm. spicy. And so that was interesting for PvP and then for PvP as well, the facet of ruin, increasing the size and damage of the burst when you shatter a stasis crystal or frozen target, um, or if you're using solar ignitions, it increases the size of the solar ignitions. Those are things that, uh, you know, something that I like about the artifact, the seasonal artifact mods, is they're using them as a means to test things in the crucible as well during that season mm -hmm. i know they are 100 100 and i think that's so cool and so like big brain you know these are things that people can choose to have on or off um so it's not always active right um people have to kind of build craft or you know build craft into it and know a little bit they don't they don't most of them just don't work on their own outside of something like you know flint striker which gets you right in off of some solar taps to the head or you know a solar kill or something like that uh, that's the one that pretty much like everybody knows, everybody uses if they're using something solar. But my point is, on the artifact right now, um, there is um, there is a stasis like mod on the end in the fifth column that increases the damage from shattering stasis crystals and also I think releases like some damaging stasis shard thingies like off yeah. of the crystals once they burst. Hail the storm, uh, shattering yes. frozen targets and stasis crystals deals increased damage. Shattering stasis crystals releases shards of ice that damage and slow targets. Yep. 
And so, and you guys know, I get kind of in depth with this. I'm trying not to be super, <laughs> super chatty about this, <laughs> you know, this. I mean, that's why I, I, like, I do like to get, <laughs> yeah, I do like to get in detail about these things. Uh, Cause it, you know, I just, I've just been here for a long time. So I know the past, I know the present and, you know, we get peaks of the future and I just see how they all come together. But the thing about Facet of Ruin, that's cool. The thing about, you know, that particular uh, artifact mod um, is that if you combine that artifact mod with a Whisper of Fissures on Stasis um, subclass, and you end up using Shatter Dive, and you obviously end up using a Glacier Nade, if you do all four of those together, then you actually get, eh, off of my experience, something about maybe 80, 85% of the power that was initially the OG Shatter Dive through Glacier Nades that ended up, you know, being a, a strong pain point in the Crucible because. It was just so easy to get kills with. It was very, very high ease of use and very reliable. Um, and so, uh, and keep in mind as well, when that first got introduced, when Stasis dropped uh, in the Crucible, um, it could kill supers very easily as well. Roaming supers had no chance against that. It was crazy. So, um, you know, it's not quite to that level, um, mm -hmm. but nonetheless, I do feel like they were kind of, they, they test things and this is what we're getting facet of ruin based off of that you know they were just like oh well you know it's not crazy you know like the way that it currently is when people combine those four together it's not as if it's it, it has the same degree of impact as the original shatter dive through glacier nades mm -hmm. um but it does make it substantially more viable um and uh and it doesn't break anything and so now we're getting this facet of ruin um, which I totally am behind because I, I'm, I'm not a big proponent of the original Shatter Dive um, into Glacier Nades, um, the way that it dropped, but the way that it is right now and the fact that it requires you to um, equip like at least four different things in order for you to get like 80% of the original um, <clears throat> and make it impact somewhat impactful again, I'm cool with that. So, uh, so yeah, um, I like this is all I'm saying. <laughs> you know, it yeah. does seem like you're probably going to have to equip it, like I said, with, um, you know, Whisper of Fishers, Shatter Dive, and Glacier Nades for you to get something out of it. But I'm all about uh, having to pull together uh, build crafting from several sources mm -hmm. in order to get something super impactful, especially on the ability side of things. Um, you know, so you're making some sacrifices, but, you know, your kit ends up being something that feels good. Well... The f the final bit of conversation that I kind of want to have uh, with you before we we let you go. Um, how does it feel ten years on to get a new, like, almost? I think this is the newest enemy type in the dread mm, the that dread. we've had um, in the lifespan of the game. Uh, uh, even like the Taken had like echoes of being from from uh, various MD1. different uh, enemy races throughout the oh, yeah. um, throughout the the game, and then you have uh, the the oh what are the it's not Forsaken what are they Scorn the Scorn like the huh. Scorn are, are just kind of like modeled off of other things. These kind of like other than the Scion looking ones seem completely whole cloth how do you feel about about fighting something brand new <laughs> in the game it's it's exciting it's exciting I, i'm excuse me i'm all for just new stuff that hasn't been solved man mm -hmm. you know uh so much of the i think i think that's got to be like the one of the biggest pain points and one of the ones that I feel like people don't talk about enough. I, like plenty of like people talk about it for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, the Cami Cakes, the Drews, um, you know, especially when it comes to PVP, but even in PVE, uh, things that are like solved, it, it, people are bored by, mm -hmm. you know, like you brought, you brought up strikes earlier and I strikes. feel like those have been supplanted by um, Grandmaster Nightfalls. I feel, I feel like Nightfalls now are well, more rewarding they're more like you want to play them more. And so you're just not hopping into a strike playlist, at least on, on this coming from somebody on like maybe a higher end, um, higher end of the skill shelf. <laughs> like, 
uh, in PVE, you, you just I just don't run strikes nearly as much as maybe I used to when I was off looking for stuff. It's it's mainly yeah. all nightfalls now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, and you're talking about something, you know, uh, like um, something that is is related or whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that strikes would definitely be have more viability, definitely be played more if it had, uh, you know, better loot in it, right? Mm -hmm. um, if it had unique loot in it, if it had an Imago loop in there, for example. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'm sure that they, you know, at this point, for for sure, do not intend for that to happen. They've been pushing people like elsewhere, or whatnot. I don't know what the future of strikes is going to be. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, bring back strike scoring, or I think that's what it was. I think it was called strike yeah. scoring, or uh, that was always really fun back in D1. But uh, yeah, um, you know, things things have just been solved for so long in PVE that ends up equating to boredom um, and mm -hmm. like a, a meta that just doesn't change. Uh, obviously, Greppo talks about uh, well, like all the time. Yeah. Uh, well of Radiance and the reliance on that, especially in higher level content um, in PVP. A really good example of this is like uh, the control playlist. We've been playing control for like forever. So it just, you know, to totally solved to the point where people just don't even have to move anymore. You know, mm -hmm. they just put on certain weapons lock down control points and we just we just don't move uh and so control does not in my opinion very well versed for the current like sandbox and where we are as far as the demographic of players and the knowledge that players have people need to be incentivized more to move and that's why i don't know why we're not capitalizing on supremacy we just end up mm -hmm. creating tribute which gives us crests Right. And so yeah. that is actually incentivizing people to move more around the map. I don't know what's going on with supremacy. I think that's honestly the best PVP mode that we currently have for this generation of Destiny 2 PVP, uh, because it's still an objective, right? Mm -hmm. Still an impactful objective by picking up those crests, but they can drop anywhere. Yeah. And so people, people are forced to go and actually travel over where they just ended up eliminating an enemy player and continue to move. Um, and there are obviously pros and cons to that, right? Um, as far as like your positioning and, and what impact that has on you being able to live and what engagement is going to follow next after that. Um, either way, uh, looking forward to Final Shape, looking forward to all this new stuff um, and going back to the Dread as the new um, like enemy type. Uh, you know, I think it's super exciting to see something. You, you called it uh, something of a wholly new cloth. Is that yeah, like the, the phrase that you use? Whole cloth. Like whole kind cloth. of like instead of like recycling something and i don't even mean that as like a bad thing like no, no, i know, no, no. I know I, development I, I, yeah. takes a while you know like yeah 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 i didn't take it that way yeah yeah um but this feels like they have brand new interactions they have brand new like enemy types that we haven't seen before in the game that yeah like some of them gonna, seem ripped change. straight out of hades yeah. <laughs> like the husks <laughs> and like yeah that reminded me of an enemy type that i faced in hades before and i was like oh i've seen you before i know who you are <laughs> you're gonna wreck my shit <laughs> i know i know your game i know yeah, yeah, your yeah. game you're gonna wreck my shit and everybody should yeah. be afraid of you <laughs> so <laughs> like yeah it kind of felt you know well, it's gonna it, create new like 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 player interactions mm -hmm. with them you know things like even just think of something simple like the bats mm -hmm. right um you know, they said it and it's true. We haven't really had that type of enemy in the game before. I think the 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 most we've really had to interact with things like flying around us that could actually do damage is maybe those like butterflies from Witch Queen. Yeah. Um, you know, that sometimes can run up if, if we get too close to them, they explode and create damage. Um and you know, we might have had like I might be forgetting like one or two other things, but we haven't had like a wholly new like flying enemy, you know, um yeah. that is just like flapping around us in in droves like multiple um that we're gonna have to aim uh you know in that vertical space um at uh and i assume that they're gonna end up being combined uh, in some sort of horde, horde mode um or mm -hmm. some sort of horde instance with you know enemies that are on the ground as well um the 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 demographic that plays destiny to our community is so skilled at the game so experienced at the game now um we need something extra to challenge us um on a fundamental level um and uh you know just mixing it up just with verticality at the very least of these enemies is is something that's good and something that folks haven't been used to doing especially in conjunction with with ground enemies so 
uh, between that and you know the husks and you know learning new engagement uh, patterns of these of these enemies and you know their crit spots and you know what's you know what's the best way most optimal way to to engage them and what happens when it's when we don't engage them optimally but we're you know we still have the opportunity to take them out or whatnot but what's going to happen next with that i mean i don't know just super interesting to see something uh you know like new to that to that degree it's not just hey we get a new enemy type but it's hey we need to interact with that enemy type yeah. very very differently from what you know currently exists in order to you know take it out optimally and even if that's not challenging they said it in the video even if that's not challenging in a 1v1 it's it's not going to be a 1v1 yeah. you're going to have multiple enemies that's the challenge of it is is multiple of these the same density. type of enemies or a mix the density exactly and the variety that are included within that that bunch um it's going to be it's going to be cool um and i'm just super excited about like new content meaning a uh, new challenge on a very fundamental level heck yeah well tony thank you so much for joining us again today um, of course where can people find you on the internet sir you can find me at ill physics on most things uh you know uh twitch.tv slash ill physics of course twitter dot uh, we, we don't call it that other name it's twitter.com <laughs> slash ill physics you can still find it with that link so we can yeah. do it like that um, and of course, every once in a while, when I post on YouTube, like three, four times a year, <laughs> you can find me <laughs> ill physics there as well. And the, the discord is also ill physics where we, we hold it down with like, you know, 3000 plus folks just in there cracking up and talking about a bunch of different stuff, playing a bunch of like, uh, improvement games and labs, uh, which are our community scrims, which are insanely popular for y'all. Y'all just, y'all just, I swear to God, I can have like a 48 hour stream and it'll just be my cue for people that want to hop into these private matches and hang out with us and improve and um, have a good time. It just never, it never empties. It literally never empties. That's awesome. <laughs> so, uh, so we have a good time um, with our community designed uh, like rule set, um, which is much more broad than uh, just a typical like scrim rule set and um, just very community driven, um, encouragement driven and, and no talks. I mean, you know, very minimal, if any. Yeah. If I hear of any toxicity, you know I'm going to be right on it. Ow. So, yeah, 100. It's pretty much zero tolerance. So we have a good time, and uh, it's a blessing. So, Heck yeah, dude. Thank you.